All right, hey, what's up, guys? So today, let's talk about sling attachment points. All right, so the front of my guns and what I usually do on these things is um, not unique in any way, and I think a lot of people have used this technique, and I took it away from a uh, technique that, or what Frank Proctor uh, and his slings came from, or how they were attached to the gun. I really like the minimalist uh, feel to it, and also just the use of it was really easy. So first off, let's talk, all right, uh, I like using 550 cord on the front of my guns uh, for a couple, couple different reasons. One, uh, sling swivels and sling swivel attachments, even when they are just part of the rail like this rail is, um, could be uh, something that interferes with your, your hand, starts creating a little bit of noise, and it's just, uh, I don't personally like it. So if you're into it, rock on, dude, keep doing sling, sling swivel thing. Um, I, I just don't personally like it on most guns. If it's on a bolt gun or um, more of a long range distance gun that I still need a sling for, I'll use QDs on those because I can get away with it better. And uh, that's probably a subject for a different um, uh, video. So going further, right, like what we're looking at is the front of my sling and, and how I kind of go about attaching it to the gun uh, versus using a QD. So usually if the slings or this sling doesn't come with some kind of front attachment, right? So some kind of like um, little front portion or let me see if I can get this in the camera. Uh, bam. So, so this is from a condition one group sling. It is a piece of 550 cord that's been already sewn to this end that gets routed onto the sling and it has this little tiny rubber grommet thing that kind of acts as a stopper for the actual 550 cord. Now, using 550 cord isn't the best and I would say the end all be all for sling stuff. I just prefer it personally. Like it, it works for me, it works for what I do. Now, uh, using something like that, um, 8 Defense makes their own flavor of it Right? So they, they have their own version of a sling front attachment with 550 cord. Let me get that focus. Right? So so you could also use that. And, uh, and then Frank Proctor's slings, all of them come with some kind of front attachment portion. Right? And that's what the Frank Proctor ones look like. So uh, pretty dang simple. It's nothing outlandish or out of, out, you know, whoa, wazoo stuff. But it's just 550 cord. If it doesn't come with the, any of those things, or if you're not willing to buy one of those things, a length of 12 inches or 14 inches, depending on how long you want it to be and how thick your rail is, uh, could work for just making a loop, right? And all you do is create a loop, and then you go ahead and girth hitch it. And I'll show you guys how to girth hitch in a few seconds, um, or in a minute or so. So one of the biggest reasons I like doing this is, is it doesn't interfere with my grip, right? It, I can s sit over it. it it's very, very minimal. It doesn't bother me in any. Um, and the other thing is I try to go um, and use 550 cord, but without any guts. So if you make this with the guts, the, the thinner, whiter uh, 550 cord pieces inside it or the strings, uh, yank those bad boys out before you tie your knot for this. It makes it more flat versus round, all right? So something to think about there. Now, um, going about the girth hitching process, right? So uh, if you've got, as I've ever looked at my slings, the front end is that 550 cord. Oh, man, the black on black's not working for me today. <laughs> but uh, but it's, it's a 550 cord on the front end, right? And as you get along to the back end of the sling, and this is one of Frank's older slings, still says weigh the gun on it. And on the back, I use a QD, right? So one of the reasons I like a QD on at least the back is a couple different reasons. One, most stocks give me a back cup that's always been used for slings, so it's there for good reason. Um, it also lets me position the sling where I want it back there. Um, and then to top it all off, if I needed to uh, disassemble the rifle into two pieces, I can at least take the sling off and I usually go ahead and leave it on the front and wrap it around my, my handguard so then I know that sling goes with that rifle and all I have to do is swap the bottoms and plug in the actual QD. So that makes it a little simple for me when I disassemble the guns or take uppers and lowers off each other or swap or whatever. The other thing um, that I like the rear one for is if for whatever reason you had any kind of problems and had to uh, take the rifle off and you had too much gear on you, 
that's a way of doing it. You just still have to release some of the tension on there to get a QD, and you got to get your finger on that small button, which is kind of hard to do. Um, so that kind of goes against the whole like, oh, if you're injured and you need to get your somebody needs to take your gun off, like popping it with a QD. I feel like that's kind of like a, a hard one to justify as well. So just little things like that, things to think about. But I mean, if you had to remove somebody's rifle from them to help them, like you may just cut the 550 cord off or cut their sling or it doesn't matter right you replace it later if you if you save their life okay so lastly let's go ahead into the process of actually girth hitching this and how I kind of keep it on the rifle so first things first like you can see there's already one on here but we'll, we'll go through the process anyways I usually go and take um, if the sling has some kind of stopper right like so I'll bring it over to the end ish right give myself enough room to get my sling through there but i'll get it to that end because it's going to end up being what pinches the rest of the, the 550 cord on top on top of itself then i will go ahead and route the sling through that hole right so it is through that little hole now now i'll take that sling i'll route, route it over whatever thingies i want whether it's just the hand guards or if it's lights, lasers, things like that, like that are on this rifle. And I usually try to find, uh, finagle my way in between stuff. So I'm gonna try and be in between these things so that my sling can't slide back and forth. So I'll tighten her down, and you can see like here's that, that little fastener, right? I'll tighten her down, and then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna try and wiggle this guy all the way to the front end and pinch it off. Right, so it's right there. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. So tightened her up on that portion, and then now my sling is good. Now the cool part about having some kind of stopper like that, and this is like some kind of plastic, um, I would I would say like a little plastic tube almost, like a harder straw, <laughs> and it, it stops it nice and easy. Uh, a couple companies use what looks like rubberized or shrink tubing, right? And then Condition One Group uses, I think, the best one that I've seen, and that is this tiny little guy. And I have no idea what it's actually for in real life, but uh, for slings, it works really good and it's really small, so it, it takes up very little space. Um, but once you have that, then you could go ahead and take your QD or the backside and go attach that to the rear of the gun. Now, here's the thing, right? If you don't attach it to or in between objects, uh, what you'll have is a very loose sling. So it, it can slide up and down the rail. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about by loosening this one up and putting it just further down the rail. So let's say you put it here. Let me get this sling out of the way. So let's say you put the sling right here. Well, what's cool about it, yeah, you could try and get it between the pick rails and it'll kind of like stay for the most part. But once you start moving around a little bit and you start using your gun like you should be, you'll see this thing, well, it'll get loose eventually and then it'll start to do something like this and start sliding here and there. And that's something I don't want happening to my sling. So a lot of times if you're using this 550 cord technique, I would not do it for anybody that likes their sling down here. I wouldn't suggest it at least. You can do whatever you want. But back here, it's it's gonna slide a little bit unless you trap it with something, um, like maybe a front rail mount or, or I'm sorry, a, a high mount for like, let's say some kind of um, a clip on night vision device or something like that for higher optics or some kind of other you know, thingamabobby that you may stick up here. You could probably trap it pretty easily, but I'd be weary of doing so. Um, it's probably not worth it. A QD back here doesn't interfere with your hand using the gun. So it's not a big deal putting a QD back here. Um, not in my opinion, at least. So going through that process, be careful putting it back here. The other thing that you can do with this, and, uh, and you can kind of see it, uh, it's pretty hard to see, but um, if you have wires and cordage that comes out, you can actually trap it underneath this sling once you put it in this space. 
So let's say I put it over here and if I had extra wires or something routing through here, I can trap them underneath my sling and also use it for some kind of wire management stuff too. Uh, it depends on how you set up your rifle because that's not gonna be the, the case for everything, but it can be and why not? So if you can tighten up your sling and you can find something to, to shim it down with, you can make it work really well or some kind of like little stopper like that that's on this one. Um, if you do not have one of those little stoppers, it's not the end all be all, and it's definitely not the end of the world for you. So, we'll get this off here so it stops banging around. So, you can see here on this one, I don't have an actual stopper of any case. Uh, what you can do is you can tape off this area um, with really a really thin piece of like 100 mile per hour tape or duct tape or something. Uh, you could do that. You could also like route over this entire setup with like that um, that camo form tape that everybody likes to use. Uh, you could do a lot of things to kind of keep it in place. Uh, personally, this is the way I like to do it. I like trap it and then this guy pretty much stays put for the most part. If it gets loose a little bit, doesn't really matter because he's still trapped between all those those objects I have on my rifle. So it's not it's not the end end of the world. Uh, but like I said, if you want to use something, uh, you could use one of these three options that they have out there to help you out with that. So you have condition one group, which is this first one on the left. All right, they, they make that little tiny, let me see if I can zoom in on all of them. So you have condition one group, they make this one that has this little tiny guy and that's part of their sling. So it's, it's a three quarter inch sling, very thin, but I like it a lot. They have this one from Ape Defense, like ape as in monkeys, and uh, it's like a rubberized shrink tubing kind of feel. And then this plastic one here that you can use, and that's from the Proctor, like Frank Proctor slings. So that's that last one. Um, so whichever flavor you want to use, you could trim them and stuff and make it a little easier for yourself to use them too, and that may help, but it's kind of your, your choice, right? Maybe something to try out, play around with, and figure out whether this is a good technique for you or not. And if it is, sweet, you got something. If you don't, no big deal. Go back to your QD or whatever you're doing to, to tie your slings on there. The one thing uh, I'll also mention is that uh, personally, I do not like going through the M-lock slots. So some guys are gonna do this and it's not wrong, but it's just not, my, my personal preference isn't there for it is going through one of these M-lock slots and capturing the sling in between them. So, and then routing your sling or girth hitching it here. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Dun, dun, dun. Intermission music. So, right there. So some people will girth hitch it on the actual rail. Let me see if I can get that right there. Right, this piece. Now the problem with doing this, in my opinion, is once it gets loose enough, it can get burned off by the the actual barrel underneath. Uh, if your your rail is really thin, um, the other thing is that this now takes away the quick ability to unroute this thing and pull it off the front of the gun. You actually have to unroute the actual thing, pull your entire sling out. It's a a little bit more, um, I would say complicated but not not that big of a deal if you want to use it this way you can um, and it's a quick easy way to do it just something to pay attention to like when you're doing things like this just make sure it's really tight um, so that it doesn't get burned off by the barrel when you get it hot so and you, you may need some little needle, needle nose pliers or something to get through there so just something to think about there so uh, come back to me so hopefully that helped guys hopefully this makes sense and uh, and you guys saw like there are different ways of doing it but there are uh, in my opinion there's there's like a really good method and then there's some sub uh, not a subpar method but it's just a different one and uh, different things that you may have to deal with based off of how you set up your rifle so personal preference up to you and what you guys want to do so I hope this helps guys take care